So good afternoon. I just wanted to speak briefly on a, uh, a topic that it might be uncomfortable for a few people. Uh, we're going to talk about honesty. Uh, we live in a world where honesty is promoted as far as giving like lip service. People want you to be honest. They think that, you know, it is a virtue. Um, however, it's not always practiced or promoted um, because it's a virtue. I mean, there are things that have, for instance, intrinsic value. They are valuable and they are good for what they are. And then you have something that is an extrinsic value, which is good for what it produces. Um, honesty is one of those things that has both intrinsic and extrinsic value. So it is valuable and worthy because of what it is and for what it does, what comes from it. So, however, in most of us have experienced this in the past. Some of us uh, may be going through it even now. But dealing with dishonest people can be just a real, not just a hassle, not just stressful, but it can really cause chaos in our lives, especially um, those who, as Christians would call, so discord, uh, whether among the brethren or whether among other people. Um, and we'll go into what sowing discord actually means. It's not something to be taken lightly. Um, and I will be, sorry if I'm glancing over here, I am quoting um, direct scripture at times. So let's start off with just the, <laughs> let's start off with a bang. And let's read uh, Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ to John the Beloved. Um, let's go to chapter 21, verse 8. And it says here, um, and it says quite directly, that, um, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. And this is the second death. Um, one of my, my sort of, I don't want to call it a favorite thing, but one of the more interesting things I find is the first person, the uh, first type of people listed aren't the murderers or whom we would call um, immoral, they're the cowards. However, the liars are mentioned there as well. And we're not talking about someone that I know we have, human, humankind, we have degrees of sin that we, that we call. Um, and apologies for my kids going back and forth. It's all, it's all good though. They're in class. Some of them aren't, or more, Indy's in class. Audrey, I think is getting ready to take her lunch. Um, but getting back to the scripture, it, it's, uh, when it talks about liars, it's not necessarily like the ones that sort of fib to get out of something. Now a lie is a lie. We know dishonesty is dishonesty. But these are people who practice and live a lifestyle of such. And part of the reason is because it comes at the cost and expense of another person's dignity and humanity. And that is not what God wants us to be. And that's not who we are called to be. So Paul writes in Galatians 5, verses 19 through 21. Again, I've got it up. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. They're evident. They are obvious is what he's saying. <laughs> these are pretty much right out there. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. I mean, those are, we can get into all of those, but idolatry, having something higher than God in your heart that you worship and adore and value. Witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, um, and, and such like of which I tell you before, he says, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things, they which practice such a lifestyle, they which continue in this unrepentance shall not inherit the kingdom of God, Paul says. These are pretty powerful words. And again, it's not talking about how we stumble, how we make mistakes, how we may lie, or how we may, may in, in, our, in our fear and cowardice, how we may try to get out of something. Or maybe it will, will bear, you know, not bear false witness, but maybe we'll tell a falsehood or a lie because we're ashamed. I mean, those things are, they're still sins, but they are forgivable. In fact, if we bring those to him, to the cleanser of all unrighteousness, he's just and merciful to forgive us. But if we continue in these practices, how can we then claim repentance and forgiveness? So, and I know these are hard words. These are hard words. But I'll tell you that there are even, I mean, even worse things. And the Bible does call some of these things out. They call out things like, like in the Proverbs, they do call out um, the things that the Lord hates. And in fact, one, one is an abomination, which is one who sows discord among the brethren. Now, getting back to that sowing discord, when you sow a seed, you're not just carelessly 
speaking stuff. You're not just saying like a one-off lie about somebody. You're not trying to make yourself look better at somebody's expense, maybe once or twice. Sowing seed implies intent. We do these things on purpose with full intent and planning because we then water that seed, right? We plant it in the ground. We make sure it's in soil that's going to produce something. It may not be good soil at this point because we're contaminating it, but we put that in the soil and we water it, except we don't water it with the, with the word of God. We don't water it with the goodness, uh, um, the grace, the love, and the hope of God. We don't water it with that. We don't water it with faith. We water it with seditious, horrible things that we say about our neighbors, about our friends, about our coworkers, about our family. We say these horrible things to assassinate their character. And Jesus, he takes it further than just what you're saying or what you're doing. It's about a condition of the heart because he knows us. He loves us still, but he knows us intimately and he knows our hearts and he knows why we're doing these things. He knows the intent and motive behind it. So somebody that, that, that speaks lies about others and sows that discord. Oh man, when you do that on purpose and you've got a plan and you're plotting and scheming to do so, oh my, my, my Lord, check the condition of your heart. Get right before God. Because those things, the, the, these are the things that God hates in Proverbs. And I'll read them off. I'll read them directly. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, right? A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift to running towards evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Now, if we look at these, we have pride, we have lies, right? Hands that shed innocent blood, we know what that means. Someone who harms someone, not in self-defense, not, not for defense of themselves or for other innocents, but who goes out and harms innocent people. A heart that devises wickedness, oh my goodness. When we plot and we plan these things, feet that are swift are running to evil. So every time you see something you're not supposed to do and we rush towards it, a false witness who speaks lies and one who sows discord. How many of those involve lying? A lying tongue? One that devises wicked plans, and if they're wicked, then they're not honest. A false witness who speaks lies, and then one who sows discord, who actually takes those lies and spreads them out amongst fellow believers or family members or, or co-workers or, or friends, things like that. And I know we're in a season where it's a, you know, because of the political environment and everything going on, but we see a lot of lies everywhere. We see a lot of embellishment, um, which are lies. I mean, if we have to make something bigger than it is, it's a lie. Um, it's not the same as telling a story or a fable or a proverb. So because we're trying to make a point and, and like uh, help change somebody's life and we're giving them an analogy. When you flat out lie and you exaggerate things that aren't there to make yourself look good or to make someone else look bad, that's what these scriptures are talking about. And my goodness, four out of these seven, quote, abomination, oh, I'm sorry, of these deadly sins in Proverbs that Solomon wrote about, four of them involving, involved lying and trying to set somebody up. So all of you schemers out there, you better get right with God. Ask him, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Don't cast me away. Don't, I, I don't want to be isolated and away from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. How can someone experience, this is what I don't understand. And this is coming from somebody I have a temper. I am impatient. I have a lack of self-control when it comes to sometimes telling people off and getting upset. But I would not dare devise wickedness against another person and plot and scheme somebody's downfall. That's a horrible, horrible thing to do. Never. Never. It's hateful. It is hateful. And the Lord calls it evil. Jesus himself speaks of it. Jesus speaks of it in Matthew 1. And while I have you here, I don't have the scripture up, but I will, I will Google it here so I don't misquote. So forgive me, please. I'm sorry, Matthew 5. Matthew 5, and I believe it's verse 11. And I'll go for the King James just because I like that one. He said, blessed are you, I'll, I'll change it a little bit, when, when people revile you and persecute you, when they say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake, rejoice and be glad for great is your reward in heaven. For they also persecuted the prophets which are before you. Jesus said that you'll be blessed when people lie about you, when people try to set you up, when they bear false witness against you. But he also says something else. When they say all manner of evil against you falsely. If they're telling falsehoods about you, they are spreading evil, evil things. And they need to get right with God. I'll be quite frank. 
And I know we talk about the love of God and the forgiveness of God. Yes. But Jesus says this too. When you sit there and you have something against your brother or your sister in Christ, we can apply it there too. Or anybody on this earth, when you have something against somebody, when you bring your gift to the altar, it is not received. It is cursed. It is cursed. If you have something against another person and you try to bring your gift to God, you bring something to God as an offering, it's not accepted. It is not. Jesus says, leave your gift at the altar and go and make things right. Then it'll be accepted. Cain and Abel, the very first example in the Bible of this happening. Cain's offering wasn't accepted and their sacrifice. And what did God tell him? Why is your countenance fallen? Why, don't you know if you do what's, what is right, it'll be accepted. But instead, he hated his brother and he murdered his brother over it. We do the same when we slander. When the tongue that God gave us to praise him, how can we praise God and at the same time lie on our fellow human being like that? We lie about them. Tell all of these lies on them. I mean, why? Why do we do it? And this isn't something that's directly from me as in something that has happened to me. I'm not discussing that. But I felt the unction and I felt this on my heart to share this. Let us watch our words, what we say about people. It's different when we're joking with friends and, and sometimes we'll rib each other, we'll bag on each other, you know, talk a little smack here and there. That's a little bit different than outright trying to set somebody up, trying to harm somebody with lies. That is so evil. And the very fact that we have to lie about it and make it up shows that they're not an evil person, or at least what they're doing isn't evil because if what they were doing was bad enough, it would be dealt with whether by an employer or by a family member or whether by a minister rebuking them. Much as this, this is an exhortation and a call to repentance and a call to stop. If you're engaging in this behavior, you are damning and condemning your own soul by doing this. Because Jesus said, if you don't forgive others, how can God, your father, forgive you? And I just mentioned God the father. Here's another father, Jesus said. When people engage and do those things, they're of their father, the devil. Because he is the father of lies, and that's who they're emulating, that's who they're imitating. My friends, please look at your hearts. Speak the truth by all means. Even if it's a harsh truth, I, I, that, is, that is better than, than, than to just flat out lie about somebody. Don't set each other up. Don't try to develop cliques and get, and, and get people on your side and against another side. Don't do that. I know it's human nature, but it is fallen nature, and it's of the devil. So let's keep it right. Let's keep our heart rights. Again, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me, but restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me with your generous spirit. Lord, you said, if your people who are called by your name will humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, then you'll hear from heaven and you'll forgive their sin and you'll heal their, heal their land. But we have to turn, people. We have to repent. We have to turn away from what we're doing and go towards what is good. Go towards Christ. He's there and he's so, he's so ready to forgive us. The blood shed on Calvary, it, it paid the price once and for all for our sins. And yet we go back to them, like, like he says, like a dog do its vomit, right? No more. Let's do this no more. Let's call things out, certainly. Absolutely, if you need to call out sin, but you love the sinner, you love the person, and call out what they are doing. But I will tell you, those that engage in things like this, the Bible is very clear. The scriptures are clear. Christ is clear on this. Quite clear. Do not do that. Do not sow. Do not plant in the ground. Water those lies. Water that deceit. Water that hatred. And let it grow into something abominable. Mm -mm. It doesn't produce fruit. It produces death. It produces destruction. And when we engage in destruction of other people and character assassination and these lies, these horrible things we tell about people, mm. what does that say about us and our soul? You're right. Again, Create in us a clean heart. Walk in the spirit and the fruit of the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Walk in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
And the fruit of the spirit, the fruit means this is what blooms from this. This is what grows and it's evident and it will show in your life. The Bible says that whatever we do in the dark will be brought out into the light. All the dark deeds that we do, all the dark things in our heart, that's going to be made known. He knows all. And when we stand before that throne, we give account. Nothing. Nobody's going to be there to defend us except for the blood of Christ. He died for us. But people, we are still accountable for what we do. Still accountable. Remember that. Remember that. Please go in the love and grace of God. But remember, remember, we are responsible and we are accountable. And that person that we lie about, that person we set up, that person we engage in hateful things and speech and thoughts and imaginings. And we want someone else to suffer. Think about that. Is that Christ in us? Is that the hope of glory manifested through us? Or are those the works of the flesh, the works of the evil one, the devil? Think about it. Think about it. I know it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a harsh message, and it's a, it's a bit different than what some people may be used to, but it's scripture. It is quite biblical. He's just, and he's, he forgives us, absolutely. What we do to other people, we will be held account for. And we'll call to account, be held accountable too. So... I pray that God bless and keep you and everybody's in good health. Watch your tongue. Like James said, how can, how can, 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 like, I'll put it like this. How can the sweet and the bitter flow from the same thing, right? How can we sit there and, and speak blessings and bless God and praise him and lift our hands up while we're wagging our finger and speaking ill with a forked tongue about our neighbor and our loved ones? Let's not do it. And if we catch ourselves, just stop. Just like that, just stop. Back it up. Correct it. Go to them. Ask them for forgiveness for what you've done. And then move on. And don't be that way anymore. That's not who we're called to be. Those are the works of the flesh. Remember, let the fruit of the Spirit be evident. So we can either sow lies and hatred and, and this corrupt uh, um, speaking ill of our neighbor and trying to set them up. We can sow discord. We can, we can water that and grow just a nasty dead tree of the works of the flesh. Well, we can let the fruit of the Spirit be evident. I pray that you choose the latter and let the fruit of the Spirit be evident in your life. Well, God bless you. I hope everybody is safe and doing well, and we'll talk again soon. You take care.